Once again, welcome to The Jay Show. This is Jay Smith. It's great to have you back. I have with me our expert in Kirat and also in Ahluf, Hatun Tash. Thanks for having me, Jay. Now, we, in the episode five, we talked uh, and we introduced some of the problems with the Akhruf and the Kira'at. These are the readings, the different readings, and you uh, refer to seven different readings that... Seven okay, different Akhrufs, Akhrufs and which we don't know what it is exactly. I, I try to find that and I try to pull that and you could not, uh, for the life of life, you try to really explain what these are. And the reason why you couldn't explain it is because Muslims can't explain it, really. Uh, we look at the Muslim writings and then they give us some suggestions, some um, arguments regarding what it might be. But as I mentioned um, in earliest episode, Yasin Kadri, who is a Muslim scholar, he says, actually, we don't know what is Ahruf um, today. So, But whatever it was, Uthman brought it to the one um, one dialects, let's call it in the dialect of Croatia. So yeah. whatever it was, it was revealed to Muhammad when it was in uh, when Muhammad was in Medina in 650s. Um, Uthman got rid of it and we left with one. Uh, so there should be one by the time of uh, by the time of yeah, Uthman in 650, 652. All yeah. the rest have been destroyed, burnt either on paper form or also in memory. Yeah. Now you're coming up with a whole slew of different readings. The Ahlu Sunday appear after Uthman, not before Uthman. Yeah. These are coming long after Uthman. Yeah. I want to look at just those five cities on the right. Yeah. These are the five cities where readers were sent by Uthman to each of these cities. You have Mecca, you have Medina, you have Damascus, you have Kufa, and then you have Basra. These are the five cities that we're going to look at first. So, these five cities, um, perfect Quran went, and also with the person who knew the Quran well. Okay. So, one perfect Quran, one perfect person. To preserve who knew it. The, yes. To make sure there would be no human intervention, to make sure that these all remain sacrosanct, yeah. that they remain pure. Yes. Remember, aim of Uthman was to make the one perfect copy and keep that perfect copy. So we're not talking about seven Akhruf now, because those seven Akhruf come before Uthman. Yes. And uh, that's why, they, in fact, they come during the time of Muhammad. Yeah. Right. I want. I hope people are getting this. The seven Akhruf that we that Muslims always keep claiming about all should have happened be the time of uh, Muhammad. Yeah. In six be, about, be before six thirty two, because of that's where all the traditions yeah. speak that they exist. Uthman brings it down to one. Yes. All right. So the seven have gone now. They've been destroyed. Yes. Now we're after Uthman. We're now moving into the 8th and 9th yeah. century. I think it will be helpful to ask general question. How come Uthman uh, find it was his right to brought God's revelation from seven Ahruf to one half? Okay, that's a huge question. Who gives Uthman the right? Who gives him the authority? He's not a prophet. Uh, yeah. He's not delegated by God. Yeah. What gave him the right to say, I want to bring it down to one? Muhammad is asking angel Gabriel to, to, to do favor to him and Arab people that um, have the Quran in seven different ways. Yet in 650s, Uthman thinks it's all right for him to brought it to one. To bring um, it down into one. one uh, and even if we even brought up in the last episode that this would be difficult, even if you had it written down in yeah. seven different, that they, they didn't even have the, they didn't have the vowelization yet. They yes. couldn't have even done that. It didn't exist. Arabic, written Arabic was not sophisticated enough to accommodate differences in vowelization, differences in dialectic, differences yeah. in the 7th century. In the 9th century, yes. That's understandable in 9th century. That's why Buhari is saying this, that yeah. these are nothing more than dialectic differences. Yeah. And Muslims are saying that today. They're not thinking through historically. This makes no sense in the 7th century. Yeah. Now, let's look at those five cities. And I, we have our Arabic expert here. I like her to go through, starting with Mecca. Give us those names again. Abdullah ibn Sa'id. So um, he died around 682. He, he went to Mecca with one perfect Arabic Quran. Ibn Kathir. So Ibn Kathir is, don't get confused, this Ibn Kathir with the Ibn Kathir, Tasvir of Ibn Kathir. This is different Ibn Kathir. Um, he is, uh, his dates are 665 to 737. So early 8th century he dies. Yes, and he's got two students. Al-Bazzi Qumbul. And their dates are late 9th century, early 10th century. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, so we're talking about 200 to 
almost 250 years later. Yeah. So one perfect Quran ends up in Mecca by Saib, and then from that one perfect Quran, we end up having three different Arabic Qurans in Mecca in just 200 years. And 250 yeah. years. So even 250 years later, they're still changing it. They're still adding it. They're still accreting it. This is as human. This is human intervention. Is yes. what we're talking about. All right. That's Mecca. Now let's go to Medina. Let's go through those names. Zaid ibn Thabit. Um, he is one of the scribes, secretary of Muhammad. He stayed in Medina. He is the official. Secretary. He is the one that Abu Bakr used in 632. Yeah. He is the one that Uthman used in 652. He is the one who was prom uh, promised paradise. Okay, he was promised. So yeah. he is the mother load, you might say. He is the official uh, uh, writer of the Quran yeah. for both recensions. Yeah. Nefa. So um, he is. His dates are 689 to 785. Okay, Neva. So he is. He died. He dies a good century and yeah, more later. Yeah, approximately hundred years after, one hundred thirty years after perfect Quran compiled, and this is in Medina where perfect Quran is compiled, where perfect Quran take place, and then he's got two students, Warsh and Qalun. So look at their dates. They are beginning of ninth century. So we are in place called Medina, where perfect Ara one perfect Arabic Quran has been compiled, yet three different Arabic Qurans end up only within 150 years. Whoa, 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 whoa. All or right. 200 years. So, so now we're up to years. six different Qurans from yeah. the perfect Quran that was first sent to these two cities. Let's go to Damascus, a third city. Al Mughira ibn Shaba. Um, uh, he died um, around 670. So roughly 20 years. Yeah. Ibn Amr. So um, his dates are 629 to 736. Now we come to the fourth city, Kufa, which is today, present day, around not too far from Baghdad yeah, in Iraq. Iraq. Uh, and here we're now going to move into three different groups. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's get the names of the first one the, uh, of the names that we have here. Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulaimi. Um, he died around 690 AD. So he's the one who took the one. Uh, perfect Arabic Quran from Medina to Kufa. Right, and he's uh, he has three students. What are their yeah, names? Three groups. Hamza, Al Kisai, Abu Bakr Asim. So look at the dates. Hamza is around eighth century. Uh, he died late eighth century. Late eighth century. He died seven seventy two. Al Kisai is beginning of ninth century. He died eight o four. And Abu Bakr Assam is late 8th century, 778. And those people have students, for example, students of Hamza. Khalaf, Khalad. And look at their datings, they are 9th century. Almost 200 years yes. later. And Al Qasai students are. Al Duri, Abu Ali, Al Harith. So it is approximately 210 years after the perfect Quran which is compiled in Medina under the Uthman we are in Kufa we've got already four different Qurans so here you have already now we have four Qurans and we still have another party what's yeah. the next group's name uh, Abu Bakr Asim Hafs Abu Bakr Shu'aba ibn Ayyash so date for Hafs is beginning of 9th century yeah. he died 8 um, 805 and um, Shabai's dating is 809. So the Quran which is from Hafs, this is the Quran which has been canonized in Egypt in 1924. So this is the Quran where our dear Muslim friends are reading today. Yet it comes from Kufa. It doesn't come from Medina. It comes from Kufa approximate 200 years after 150 years after perfect Quran has been compiled. So this one that I have in my hand right now, this is the one that was canonized in uh, 1924 in Cairo at Al-Azhar University yeah. by those scholars. Yeah. This Arabic here, you're saying, comes from 805. It is derived from 805. Do we have that a manuscript from 805 uh, named, uh, written by Hafs? No, we, we, we won't have that many scripts. That's another topic. But um, that's like Hafs. They attribute it to Hafs, is yes. what they're saying. And that's yeah. why they call this the Hafs 
copy. Yep. This is the Hafskarat. This is not really then way that I've always been told that this is Uthmanic Quran. This is the Uthmanic recension. Yeah, so that's why they say that because Uthman sent uh, Suleimani to um, Kufa and then Hafs is a uh, Hafs Quran born around um, 805. It's actually 9th century. Beginning of 9th century or late 7th century. Now, why haven't Sorry, we been told century. that this is a 9th century Quran, not a 7th century Quran, not a mid 7th century, an early 9th century Quran? Interesting. Hold on to that. Are you all following this? We're going to pack it. We're going slow for you all to show you that what we're, what we're the same themes coming up over and over again. This is not something that's coming from God. This is not something that's coming from Muhammad. This is not something that's coming from Uthman. This is coming, this Quran that we have in our hand today is coming from many different sources already. We're up to, we're getting up to around 21. We're already 18 that we've looked at already in this episode. And now we found out that this one here that we have sent, this particular Quran that we've always been told is known as the Hafs Quran, is actually derived from a, a student of a student yeah. of somebody that was sent to Kufa, not yeah. even Matea, not Medina, sent to Kufa in Iraq. Yeah. Uh, in 809, during the Abbasid period. So this would be an Abbasid. This would be a Persian individual. Now, let's continue on down with those. So we have nine, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that come out of Kufa. Yeah. Let's go to Basra, the fifth city. Amir ibn Abdul Qais. So his dates are 674. Uh, and Abu Amr ibn al Ala. And then Quran has been attributed to the Abu Amir is he died around 7, 770, so late 8th century. And he has two students. Al-Duri, Al-Susi. Yeah, and their date is, look, late 9th century. So perfect Arabic Quran went to Basra with someone who knew, who knew the Quran very well. And 220 years after that perfect Quran arrived there, we've got already three different Arabic Qurans. Okay. I just want to point out something, and I, I hope people are showing that. If you could show this on your graph there on the screen. Take a look at the second. You have the first names in each one of the cities. Look at the second group that comes up. Notice their birth dates all come after the persons uh, that they are derived from. So these are not necessarily students because they weren't even born when these other people were... Yeah, yeah, it passed from people to people. So from already people there to could be people. one or two generations in between these is what we're saying. Yeah. So we're talking about maybe three to four generations later that you start getting these disputes, that you start getting these differences, uh, these differences as far as recitations. And as we're going to find, they are actually consonantal differences. Yeah. But we're not going to get into that yet. These are the readings that are now differing. They're, they're objecting to that which they were sent down to. Yeah. They're not de objecting to their, their, uh, uh, to their teachers because these were all born after their teachers yeah, yeah. were long dead. Yeah. But it seems like in the 7th century, I'm sorry, in the 8th century, there seems to be disputes coming up because yeah. a lot of these happened in the 8th century. Yeah. And then by the 9th century, there's even more students. Yeah. Now, these are students that are disputing with their teachers. Yeah. So there's in-house disputations. This is fascinating uh, that people disagree about how the Quran should be written yeah. or what it should say. Now, that's on the right side. Those are the five cities. Let's yeah. now move over to the left side of your graph. On the right side, we saw seven well-known readings. So that they are the well-known ones. Yet, on the left side, we've got still Qurans, but by Muslim scholars, they are identified as, um, they are not as authoritative as other seven readings. Because they're not canonical. Yes. Okay, so these are the non-canonical, and they're authoritative, but not canonical. Yes. Okay, and these are the three. Go ahead, the mashur, is that am I correct, how, how you say it? Mashur. Mashur, okay. So, we've got the Quran, which was in Medina, by... Abu Jafar. Yeah, he, his dates are 747. Mid-8th century. Yeah, and then he's got two students. Ibn Wardan, Ibn Jamez. Look at their datings. They are dating as late 8th century. A good 100 years so later. In Medina, again, we end up having three different Qurans, okay. Arabic Qurans, in so addition to other um, other Qurans which was already in Medina. 
Remember, oh, we that's had, right. this is again in Medina, but by Muslims, this is not as authoritative as others. Okay. So those are like uh, outside of seven readings. So six coming out of Medina is what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. And um, in Basra, we've got Yaqub al Hadrami. And his dates are um, around 9th century again. From him, we've got two students. Ruwais, Rauh. Look at their datings the, again in 9th century. In Basra, additional what we had before, now we've got again three extra Qurans, Arabic Qurans. So another three. So six coming out of Basra. Yeah. Six out of Medina, six out of Basra. Three of them are canonical, three of them non-canonical. Yeah. Three can, uh, canonical out of Basra, three non-canonical out of Basra. Yeah. And then we've got, um, again, different Qurans in Baghdad. Talaf okay. al-Bazzar. And uh, his dates are, again, 9th century, 848, um, when he died. He has two students. Ishaq. Idris al-Haddad. Look at their datings. Late 9th century, early 10th century. Whoa, 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 so whoa. again, additional what we had in Baghdad, those two Qurans are uh, those two Qurans are edited to that one. So these are 250 years later. Yeah. So here we have another nine Qurans yeah. uh, that are coming out uh, that are non-canonical, and they, two of them are from cities that we've already looked at. Yeah. One of them is a new city, Baghdad. Yeah. Okay. Yet, um, and also we've got some other Qurans by, for example, Abu Amar. And then one Quran in is Basra, in Mecca, and another in Basra, which are dated in 7th, 9th, 8th century and 9th century. Yet, uh, tradition just mentions them. It doesn't give us that much information about them. Okay, so we just know about them. Yeah. Goodness sakes, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 Qurans. Yeah. that you're talking about over here. 21 on the right, 13 on the left. Yeah, but, uh, so Muslims would say those are the Qurats, Riwayats. That's 34 different Qurans ha and having different are, uh, Qurats. Yeah, it's uh, latest date is like beginning of 10th century. And we read the uh, Muslim writings and then they told us there were 25 uh, Riwayats was exist in approximately 250 years after uh, death of Muhammad. So people, Muslims uh, in Explain early centuries... Explain that, what you mean by riwayats, because that's we it's a word we haven't come across yet. What do you mean by riwayats? Narrations. These are narrations. Yeah. So for example, the Quran you would be reading would, say, would be tell us, this is the Ruh, Ruh's Quran, um, which narration comes from Yaqub bin Hadmani. So okay. Okay. student and teacher, and that it takes us back to Muhammad, according to Islamic tradition. Hatu, this has been terrific. Just going through, I hope you're all watching this as we unpacked it. Can you now see why there, there is a proliferation in the 8th and 9th century of different readings? These readings start to come across, and they come out of majorly about five, well, really six cities. You have Mecca, you have Medina, you have Damascus, you have Kufa, and you have Basra, and then you also have Baghdad. So you're having five of the cities are canonical readings and then Baghdad would be uh, non-canonical yeah. along with Mecca and uh, and uh, Medina so you certainly you're having a proliferation going on to me that suggests there's an awful lot of human intervention okay let me just clarify something when we say when Muslim says it's reading they mean it's only the recitation yet when you look at those Qurans actually it is more than recitation it is how it is written down Okay, let's just look at what they claim. Let's go through and, and help me un unpack this. Uh, there have been, in, uh, and off the internet, I pulled off some of their, what they claim are considered to be their reasoning. And they give us seven different categories. that m m These are Muslims claiming, not okay. me, not you. These are what Muslims claim are the reasons why these differences yep. are in reading. One of them is that there's a, just really, it's nothing more than a change in wording. What would you say to that? Uh, Yes, there are some verses. Um, it is uh, written a little bit different, but it doesn't change any meaning. Yes, that those words are exist in those Qurans. Now, are there also changes in words that do change the meaning? Yes. Ah. So that's, so that's what, what is that claim is not necessarily true. There are there are sometimes it is part of the uh, story, but it is not whole the story. Not the whole story. Yeah. So there are some that there are different words like synonyms. Yeah. We have that in English. We have yeah. that. I'm sure you have that in every yeah. language. That have they're different words, but they're exactly the same meaning. Yeah. And I'm sure that's the only ones that they go public yeah. with. 
We're going to show some in, in, in another episode where there are actually quite a few words that not only are synonyms, but are antonyms or even change the meaning completely yeah. and change, in some cases, the yeah. theology. Yeah. So that's not a good enough excuse. Another excuse that comes up is that these are just um, words or letters that conform to vowless or dotless script. Uh, they, they, they're nothing more than, uh, because we don't have the dots yet, it's nothing more than these constant, these what we will call consonantal text. Um, again, it is part of it, but it is not whole of it. Okay, because we're going to look at almost yep. all the ones. In fact, these are long after the dots have already been added. Yeah. We're talking about up to the 10th century. Yes. We're talking about 8th, 9th, and 10th century. All these names, and that's why you went through these dates very carefully. These are long after Uthman, and this is the, now the time when the diacritical marks have been introduced, yes. when the vowelizations have been introduced. We haven't got yeah. into that yet. That's so you can't make that excuse anymore. We're not talking about Uthman anymore. We're now talking about all after Uthman. In yeah. some cases, 100 to 200. In some cases, 250 years after. Yeah. Third uh, example they say is, these are nothing more than a change in word order. So you might have, he comes late or late he comes. It's the same thing. Uh, yes, there are some verses which says, uh, fought and killed. And in other Quran it says, killed and fought. So like, um, yes, we do have those examples, yet it is not whole story. Okay, because we're going to see some examples yeah. where in one verse it's fought, in another complete different verse, yeah. it's and the same verse in another complete yeah. uh, reference, another. Or they used kira, together, but in different orders. Okay, so there are the examples, but as I said, it's not the full story. You're only getting half the story yeah. in this. They're not yes. being completely honest, and that's why we're doing these though. series. Yeah. That's why we're doing these videos. That's why we're actually talking to you to show you this is not the whole story, yeah. and we're going to show you what uh, what the whole story is. Yeah. Another fifth one they come up with is that the form of the word a structure is changed. This change could be from a plural to a singular. Nothing more. So it could be singular or plural. Yeah. Um, yes, there are the examples of that. Um, we can see them. There are lots of examples of that. Uh, but let me emphasize again, it is not full story. It is only part of story. Like, uh, we're going to get to one that later where uh, you can give some, uh, uh, alms to one poor man or yeah. many poor men. Yeah. That, that has huge significance theologically. Yes. So th whether it's plural or singular, it does make a difference in the yeah. context. Like, are you killing one person or are you killing a group of people? Are you feeding one person or are you feeding a group of people? And to get salvation, yeah. I'd like to know because I would rather just have to feed one person and make it easier for my salvation if that was my intent. Of course, it isn't. Now, the, the form of the word, or you might say, the differences in inflection points. That's all it's talking about. Uh, yes, there are the examples in these 27, di 26 different Arabic Qurans. We can see those examples, yet it is not the full story. Okay, and then the last one they come up with, these are nothing more than uh, differences in pronunciation. That is the general <laughs> story I heard all my life. Uh, but um, those 26 different Arabic Qurans claim something else. So overall, but not only that, how can you have different pronunciation if you don't have Dama Kassar or Fata? Yeah. If you have dialectic difference, we yeah. already had from our Arabic expert here that that just can't happen. Yeah. Today it can happen, but not that early. Okay. Yeah. Like when you look overall, yes, those seven categories is part of the story, but uh, overall story is all those changings are making difference in the meaning of the verse. Okay. Some of those changing affects theology, some of those changing just different words, different meaning. So sad our dear Muslim friends don't give us the full story, but uh, thanks that we've got those different Arabic Qurans, we can work them out. Thank you for having gone and collected all so we can actually ask these questions with the Qurans in hand. Now, let's go to Kirat. Kirat um, is very similar to Ahruf. What would you say is the difference between the Kirat and Ahruf? Let's just get our Arabic speaker to, get, get, do you have any differences that you would say between a Kirat and Ahruf? So in Arabic, Kiraat means readings. Ahruf means letters. Okay, so Ahruf would be letters. Kirat would be readings. So according to Islamic tradition, Ahruf would be the, uh, the way Muhammad received the revelation seven different ways seven different ahrufs, yeah. which Uthman brought it back to one, okay? Krats Kra um, are the way, uh, again, the reading. So, for example, we've got the reading of 
Kalun, we've got the reading of Walsh, we've got the reading of Hobbes. So that's, those are the Grads. Okay. So we, we look at the Islamic tradition, which tells us around 250 years after the um, Hijra, there are 25 different Grads was exist out there. Okay, if I have some questions about this, and I have, maybe we need to bring this up on screen. If we can look, bring these up on screen, these different questions. Uh, my first question is, if you have seven different Ahruf or Kira'at, different readings, did Uthman purposely leave out the other six when he made his final version? What, uh, uh, help me here, what would you say? Uh, according to tradition, I would say yes, because it is purposely done. If it wasn't purposely, First of all, they wouldn't burn what is not in the part of the book. All the manuscripts, everything written before 650s has been burned by order of Uthman. So it is done by purposely. Yet, Uthman is a caliph who is the leader of Islamic country, who never met Allah, who never met angel, and who never received any revelation from creator. But he thought it was all right to bring it to the one level. It's okay. done purposely. Um. It's interesting, it was obviously he did want to get rid of the six because he says to keep it in only one dialect. Yeah. That's the Qureshi dialect. What about all these scholars that come after? Because almost all these scholars we've looked at, and we looked at their dates, they all come after Uthman. They don't come during Uthman, and they certainly don't come before. So this is our, this to me completely That's eradicates any idea of seven Ahruf. That's a real problem here, isn't it? Yeah, in that case, uh, th there was no point for everything to be uh, written down in one version because as it went to different cities, it just changed again. Now, obviously, in the question you brought up, who gave Uthman this authority? Um, I guess he thought it was right as a caliph, he could do those kind of things. That's right. He Forget the other six that had come up. Let's just finish off with this. Uh, we're going to uh, bring this episode to an end, but and with two more questions. How can you have dialectical difference with a purely consonantal script? And we, we've asked this of our Arab expert here. That's true. You cannot have dialectical differences in a consonantal text. And the reason why is because you need, in order to have dialectical uh, differences in a written text, you need to at least have vowelization. You yeah. need to be able to have diacritical marks, but more than that, you need to have the Dhamma, the Kasra, and the Fatah, and we'll do that and unpack yeah. that in the next episode. Do e the other Ahrus change the meaning of any verse, even so, just one? So, we don't know if we have the Arufs today, because remember, Uthman got rid of it, the one we have are the Qurats. Yet, Qurats changing the meaning of the words. Okay, or that's, of the verses. so they do. And you are claiming yeah. right now that they do change. That's yeah, the claim that, you're going to go with. Yes. All right, we can't prove that yet. We're going to have to wait. We're going to have to unpack what Ahruf, I'm sorry, what the different razam are and yeah. the different words. We're going to have to actually teach our people, the people who are watching, what we mean by the different letters. Yeah. That's in the next episode. God be with you. It's so good to have you along. Uh, this is Jay and Hatun, the Jay Show. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.